Hi everyone, Ken here. Today I want to talk about an amazing data visualization library that I just found. And uh, you know, everyone knows D3, but if you think about it, D3 is not uh, a charting library, right? It's a low level graphics library, mostly used for SVG content. Here I was more interested into, um, you know, learning more about the charting library or you have like all the charts that you will ever need and you can also uh, customize and create your own, right? So I stumbled into, uh, you know, there's like, I don't know, a billion different uh, JavaScript libraries, Python libraries, depending on uh, what you are, you know, your, uh, if you're more a front-end person or a back-end person. And some of them actually are in Python and they generate JavaScript code that you can uh, use on the web. So you don't ever see JavaScript, although the, the final result is on the web. But here I was more interested into something that you could uh, plug in as a you know front end part, so purely uh, JavaScript, but also uh, very powerful. And I stumbled onto this amazing library called uh, eCharts, which becomes uh, it's uh, like released under the Apache Apache Foundation. So if you're not really familiar with uh, Apache, let me show you. Uh, basically, uh, so this is the page, right? Apache. Uh, we have several different uh, like projects that are you know under this uh, this foundation uh, some of them you know um, I don't know it's most of the like the most uh, popular open source probably is in Apache you have um, I don't know um, uh, like SQL database uh, data packet transport uh, formats you know uh, distributed uh, like spark if you want to do distributed computing everything is a uh, you know uh, under this uh, foundation like check out this project list. So as you can see, there's like tons of, their, of, of them. But here we are uh, interested into, uh, you know, in, in the charts library. And basically this library was created by Baidu, the Chinese Google, uh, you know, back in the day, and they decided to open source and support it. So it's uh, starts to get uh, quite popular. But the funny thing is, you, know, you I, I didn't find any like, uh, ton, like, I don't know, articles or like tons of video online about this uh, library, even though it's very, very popular, as you can see on GitHub, it has more like that almost 45,000 stars, uh, to this day. And uh, of course, D3 has a thousand, uh, 100,000, right? But here it's really about creating charts. So let me show you some examples of, uh, this library. So basically the first thing, when you go on the, 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 the webpage here and you click on uh, just uh, examples, you would see that, okay, they have tons of examples. So probably all the charts you ever need are here, right? It's like only about the bar chart, this is the pie chart, the candlestick, radar, the graph, the lines. So you have, I don't know, a hundred uh, of different uh, uh, charts that you can just uh, uh, use. Now, the cool thing about this library, it's, it's more declarative, meaning that you describe how you want things to appear and you don't really care about the underlying implementation, which is the opposite of D3. Where in D3, you basically uh, describe, you, you describe, but you have to like, make the chart from by, by yourself. You uh, play with the size of marks, you play with the data mapping. This you cannot really, uh, you find this in all different charting libraries, but you have to put the right access here. You have to take care of the animations. So it's a lot of work. It's really cool if you want to design, you know, custom charts. Uh, but in most cases, you would basically uh, need the combination of the charts that you see here. So uh, how does it work? Let me show you some examples. Um, yeah, let's start with a simple one. So I like, I pre, yeah, this one, for instance, this is like, you know, uh, was very popular, the running bar chart. So it's a bar chart, right, which is animated. And if you have a category that is more popular than the other, they basically swap and they go on top. And so, how, so this is like the uh, the chart, but how does it look like? I mean, do you have to code anything that, for the animation? And this is the, the, the code. It's only here 56 lines of code. This is just to basically create uh, fake data. And the chart itself is this. So how does it work? The whole library works around this option object, which uh, is uh, like a JavaScript uh, you know, object, a dictionary, I would say. Uh, and as we will see, there's also a binding of each chart in Python. So you can use all the charts that you see here 
in Python, in React, in Vue, in other like, front-end uh, framework that you like, but also in Python at the, in the back-end. So basically, you have an option here. You say, okay, uh, you select the axis, x-axis, y-axis. Uh, you say, okay, in this axis, okay, it's going to be a type, and the, the type here is really defines the, the charts that you have. And then you have the, the, the series. So this is where you put the data and you have options like real-time sort, true, false, uh, like the type is a bar. Um, and basically here I'm describing what I want to see, but I'm not really, you know, I don't care about the implementation details. And that's the, the very cool thing. It's a bit, maybe if you're familiar with also some other uh, library, uh, Viga and Viga Lite also works, uh, the, the, they work the same way. So you describe with the, like a JSON file here, it's just a JSON uh, uh, like, you know, object, right? How you want the chart uh, to look like and to make it, and basically it will create it for you. So let's show, let me show you another example. Uh, this one, this one is pretty cool. Uh, so first thing you notice is that they are also like on the website, they have a nice uh, like light and dark mode for all the, the, the charts that you, that you want. You can of course, uh, create your own themes, right? And uh, so, as I said, because it's mostly that like, was created by a Chinese company, you would see some charts in Chinese, which I don't read, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is how do you read this. And basically here, you can specify the colors for my lines. Okay, I can get that. The title, maybe I can change it here, test. So this is a live interactive uh, stuff, but of course you can you know run this on your own computer if you want to. Uh, okay, I, a tooltip, right? Do I look look at this cool tooltip? Basically, it says, uh, okay, the axis. So I I don't know anything about the library, but I can did it. You know, I can understand what it does. Trigger axis. So okay, it's gonna be on this axis. It's a cross, right? I have like two lines, this line and this line. Uh, I have the background color of the axis. Uh, I have the pointer, and then you can of course, uh, you know, add, add other stuff. Um, the legend here, of course, I can put it there. Uh, the grid and how you place the chart in space, right inside the container that you have. So three percent of the left, on the right. I can change. Let me let me try. Let me put. See, thirteen percent is pushing. And look at how what it did by just doing that and basically resetting the option. All the animation. This is very important. Are taken care of for you. Look look. Let me show you this again. You know, it's sliding, everything is smooth. And this is very time consuming if you want to make, uh, you know, amazing uh, looking charts. The most, like the, the things that takes the most time is the, are the animations. And here, in most cases, everything is taken care of, right? All the, like the highlighting, uh, blurring stuff, you know, um, scrolling, everything is made for you. And if you refresh the data, everything is gonna be animated uh, quite easily. Right? Then you have, okay, you have the, 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 how do you put the axis and then the series, so the data itself, right? So you have one, two, three, four, five lines. So you have five, you know, blocks like this with the, is it smooth? Is it not smooth? Okay, maybe I put it false. So the second one will not be, uh, you know, smooth. And as you can see here, we have like a, uh, you know, linear uh, line here. It's not uh, like smooth as a Bezier curve, for instance. And you can mix things up, right? You can, if I just change the order, but I will can put the, the lines on top of the other, it, it, you know, you can really do, I can change, of course, the, the value here. And look, if I change it automatically, everything changes, it's updating in real time. It's really, really impressive because it's very simple. And so it means that in any uh, other library, as long as you can basically provide this dictionary, right, this, this format, you can use it in like, all different, all, like all the languages that you need. You don't need to really take care about the actual, uh, actual implementation. So let's uh, check another example. Here we have a combination of different charts in the same one, right? So it doesn't really matter for each chart. So you can either have different each charts instances, or you can just have several charts inside the same uh, like chart like this. So here we have a line, we have a, a bar bar chart, and at the same time a dotted line. I'm not sure if it's really good in terms of data visualization itself as a field, but it's really uh, interesting visually, right? So, and look at the code. It's only a hundred different lines like, of code. And this to implement in D3, I, I, I can tell you it would be much more, right? Because you have the selection with the rectangle, 
you have the, the line the line with the dots uh, you have the bars and everything is updated uh, like in real time so it's always the same stuff you have a series and then you have different types of series for like all the charts that you need so one is going to be a line chart one is going to be a bar chart and then the other one is going to be also another line and you have uh, here you have the dotted line for the oldest the things that you see here you can change the color maybe I put zero and Okay, it's it's updating because by default when you rerun the code, it's like generated uh, generating uh, random values here. But you see all the animation that are pretty smooth. So uh, okay, what can you do? This is like just uh, like line chart and bar charts. Here we have a stream graph or how they call it, uh, uh, how, table river. I don't know. It's written somewhere. The theme river. Okay, it's the stream graph. Uh, once again, look. You have all the highlights with the drop shadows. Uh, there are like like created for you you can it's like here in the emphasis block basically it's one what what you do on hover right with your mouse shadow blur i can put i don't know 200 yeah so it's going to be tons of blur behind but you see it's very easy very reactive uh, the chart is also uh, reactive you can uh, put mobile query so when what happens when the chart is very very small uh, you can do that here you don't need to code here you can like define it declare it and the uh, options here. Uh, what else? So there's also a very cool thing that I didn't show you here. So th this are like the basic uh, uh, e-charts, uh, basic e-charts, but they they have implemented an extension based on, on WebGL. And then you have amazing, uh, very like graphic intensive visualization that you can do with the same declarative format. So uh, let me show you some examples. I think I have pretty very well. This one, for instance, yeah, it's pretty cool. This one is a graph. So they have a, like a regular graph. Uh, I should say that most of the, the charts are either in SVG or Canvas. It doesn't really matter for the, the library. Here, I, I wanted to show you that it's actually a quite big graph. It's, uh, I think, 20, yeah, 48,000 edges, so links between the nodes, and I think 22,000, um, yeah, 20, almost 23,000 nodes. And as you can see here, when I close this uh, window and refresh the page, uh, you see that it's actually pretty uh, reactive. So here the animation, the layout is very smooth. I can you know move around the graph. I can zoom in, zoom out. And uh, this is pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. And once again, the, the code is basically this. Check it out. Like 20 lines of code, as long as you have a graph defined. So it's nothing. Um, what else? Let me run this example now. Um, you know, it's the demo effect it should work, but we don't see anything. This was working pretty, I maybe need the server. I'm not really sure. Ah, sorry. Let me refresh this. Yeah, this one. Okay, let's let's do this one first. So this is pretty impressive. If you need to work with cities and or maps, of course they have all this GeoJSON parsing, so you can you know just put the 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 shape basically of your the thing you want to draw. It could be a country, it could be a, a city, any any uh, shape, and basically you create the feature map. And then they have a, like this option, a three D option, or you can really play around. And as you can see, the shaders are create like are quite nice, right? You have this the, the light effect. You can also add some. Uh, uh, post effect like uh, SSAO, blur, depth of field, I can put it to true maybe. And you see now that uh, something like here is blurred at the background, but you know, clear uh, in the foreground. This is pretty impressive for uh, uh, like visualization library. It's very, uh, like the code here is just about for the camera itself. And so it's uh, very few lines of code. This will take a uh, thousand lines of codes to, to code if you had to like do it from scratch, right? So. Um, yeah, I wanted to do this one, but I'm not sure why it doesn't load. Uh, it was uh, working before. It was a, it's a map of the US, but uh, um, so yeah, you really check this library out. So um, the, the, like the possibilities are endless, and I think that now if I if I really wanted to, I'm working on a project which actually requires a charting library. I think I will definitely go with the, with this one. Uh, because it's really, really simple. And as I just said before, um, let me show you uh, the Python binding. So uh, you have a library called Python eCharts. And so the, the documentation is quite scarce. 
Okay, that's the, the, the bad thing about it. And say, oh, well, whatever, it's in Chinese, right? So you can ch change the language to English. But basically it's the same binding. Uh, so you can really look at the e-chart uh, you know, option and, and everything, but it's made with Python. So it generates the, the, the dictionary, the HTML, uh, the JavaScript object and basically updates it in real time. So, and you can uh, of course use this binding in a Jupyter notebook. So if you are a data scientist, machine learning engineer working with Jupyter notebook, you can you know, you know, drop the Matplotlib, Bokeh, uh, Plotly uh, stuff and try to uh, use this one as well. And you have all the reactive stuff uh, that changes all the theming. And as you can see in Python, it's pretty simple as well, right? You create a bar chart, you add the axis, and basically this will create the options that we saw uh, in the JavaScript uh, version. You can render an image or you can, you know, uh, like play it live or like this with the uh, NumPy and stuff. So this is gonna be very uh, also easy. I would say that the, 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 the thing that is not really great is here is like the documentation is really scarce. So it's not, uh, it would make sense for me to read the actual here documentation from the, uh, the e-charts and the tutorials actually from the e-charts website to have a better idea of what happen, what's, in the, what's happening in Python. But uh, it's, it's pretty, I mean, if you don't mind the Chinese examples, uh, I mean, if you can just read the code, it's in English, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. They also have some uh, new transformations. So uh, for the, let's say that this is your data set and you can like declare, okay, I want to only filter this dimension or filter by, you know, uh, drop some values here without doing this in JavaScript yourself and or take the result and uh, like display it uh, basically. So yeah, check it out, uh, echarts.apache.org. Uh, to me, this would be my, my go-to uh, library now if I wanted to uh, like go quickly and have uh, pre-made charts. And as we saw, the, the 3D example are quite uh, impressive. And uh, let me maybe show you one last example if it works. Look at this, all the flights. You say, okay, I need to create a basically write a shader so they have lines and have all this animation of the, and here everything is very reactive. You can zoom, but the code itself is just like 50 lines of, it's not even code. It's just declaring what, what, what you have, like the camera, the light, and then maybe I want to have more lights, right? I can just change the intensity. Everything is going to be brighter. And if I put this uh, small, it's going to be darker. Uh, I don't know, you can just change and actually check how the API works. It's, the website itself is pretty cool because you can just, you know, try to understand uh, what's happening just by looking at the different parameters without even looking at the API uh, for each chart, right? So uh, I hope that you like this, uh, this uh, video and uh, that you uh, hopefully uh, are gonna use this, this library. I think it's really growing fast and it, it's really competing with the other uh, like JavaScript libraries such as uh, DeckGL from Uber. Uh, D3 is not the same like level of, uh, of abstraction, so I would not directly compare them to the other. And uh, I'll see you in the, in the next video. If you like it, if you have any comments, you know what to do. You can uh, just also send me an email, uh, follow me on Twitter, and I'll try to come up next week with other uh, new uh, videos about data art and data visualization. Have a great day. Bye-bye.